Hello and welcome to the ninth lesson in the U.S. Citizenship Preparation class. We are almost to number 12, so thank you for staying with us. Classes are brought to you through the Gilchrist Immigrant Resource Center with special thanks to teacher Daniel McCall. And as always, don't forget to introduce yourselves below if you haven't done so already. Uh, let us know where you're from and where you are in the process to become a U.S. citizen. Now, let's have a little review test on some of last week's questions. Hey, I hope you've all been studying. Let's try this one. Name one right only for United States citizens. Name one right only for United States citizens. Either answer here, vote in a federal election or run for federal office. Vote in a federal election or run for federal office. What movement tried to end racial discrimination? What movement tried to end racial discrimination? That is the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement. What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Okay, these are for everyone. You can choose any two of these. Freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to petition the government, freedom of worship. It's, you can also say freedom of religion there. And the right to bear arms. Okay, two rights of everyone living in the United States. What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? Any of these? Give up loyalty to other countries. Defend the Constitution and laws of the U.S. Obey the laws of the United States. Serve in the U.S. military if needed. Do important work for the nation if needed. Be loyal to the United States. When must all men register for the Selective Service? When must all men register for the Selective Service? That's at age 18, or you can say between 18 and 26. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. Citizens 18 and older can vote. You don't have to pay a, po a poll tax to vote, or you can say you don't have to pay to vote. It's fine. Any citizen can vote, or any citizen, women and men, can vote, or a male citizen of any race can vote. Okay, those were the four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote, and you just need to know one of them. What did Susan B. Anthony do? What did Susan B. Anthony do? She fought for women's rights. Or you can say she fought for civil rights. Okay, either answer is correct. Let's try one reading and writing sentence. If you're looking, try to read this sentence. If you're driving, please do not read this sentence. Um, let's try this together. What do we have to pay to the government? What do we have to pay to the government? And then you'll try writing this sentence. We pay taxes. We pay taxes. And check your answer here. 
Now for a brand new civics lesson covering the U.S. Wars of the 1800s. The U.S. The United States fought four major wars in the 1800s. They were the War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War. Let's first talk about the War of 1812. In the War of 1812, the U.S. fought Great Britain. Again, right? This is after the Revolutionary War where we gained independence. So now we have the War of 1812, and the reasons included Great Britain was forcing Americans of British origin to work on their military ships. Great Britain was also giving guns to the Native Americans to fight against the United States. The U.S. wanted land in what is now Canada, so we were fighting for some more land. During the War of 1812, Great Britain burned the White House and the U.S. Capitol. You can see here a famous picture. And the Star Spangled Banner was written in Baltimore. And here's a picture of, of Francis Scott Key as he is on a ship in Baltimore Harbor looking at the American flag and he will write, his, he will pen the poem that becomes our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Now the U.S. won the war in 1815, but it did not get that extra land it wanted up in Canada. This is the War of 1812. Now the Mexican-American War from 1846 to 1848. The Mexican-American War was a dispute over Texas, with bo which both countries claimed. When the war ended in 1848, the U.S. and Mexico signed a treaty that agreed on the boundary between the two countries as the Rio Grande. And in addition, the U.S. paid Mexico $25 million for California, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. And you can see here all the land granted to the United States after the Mexican-American War that set the boundary here along the Rio Grande, and it, then it also extended the United States land all the way to the Pacific Ocean, okay? All the way west to the Pacific Ocean. There's a lot of land. Now, the Civil War. I am so sorry rushing through these wars. I always feel so badly because you can spend a lifetime just learning about one war. So please excuse um, the brevity and quickness of the lessons here. Now the Civil War is 1861 to 1865. In the 1800s, slavery divided the nation. African people were brought to America and sold as slaves. They were forced to work without getting paid usually under very violent conditions. The northern states wanted to end slavery throughout the United States. Now, um, in the 1800s, the slavery divided the nation, but African people were being brought to America for a very long time and sold as slaves. The keywords, some keywords here from this time, civil war. A civil war is a war within a country within the same country. Slavery is when people are the property of others. The slave trade from 1500 to 1870 was when approximately 12.5 million people were shipped from Africa with approximately 2 million people dying on the harsh voyage. Slaves were brought to the Americas to work in fields that were growing and harvesting cotton, sugar, tobacco, molasses, and rum. You can see here, this is an example of a slave, a slave ship and the transportation of the African peoples. During the Middle Passage is what they would call it, when the transit from the continent of Africa to the New World where thousands of Africans died due to dehydration, malnutrition, disease, and 
violence inflicted in response to any form of resistance. Conditions aboard the ships were inhumane and atrocious, with captives, you can see, packed on top of one another. The journey to the Americas took more than seven weeks and resulted in an estimated two million deaths. A diagram of the African slave trade from 1500 to 1870 here shows how millions of African people were uprooted from Africa and taken to Europe, South America, Central America, and North America. Now, during the Civil War, 11 southern states tried to separate from the Union to create their own country. The North and the South argued whether or not states had the right to leave the Union. This issue of states' rights was another cause of the Civil War. So slavery was a cause of the Civil War and this, the states' rights. You can see here a picture of this nation divided where we have the Union states up here in dark blue, the border states in a lighter blue, and then the Confederate states in red. So these are the 11 states that wanted to separate from the Union. The Civil War was the U.S. war between the North and the South. Okay. The Confederate states were the 11 southern states that separated from the United States in 1861 to form the Confederate States of America. Okay. If we look quickly back at that map, you can see how the nation was divided. Here we have Abraham Lincoln, the president during the Civil War. He is known for freeing the slaves, or what is called the Emancipation Proclamation. To emancipate means to be free, to proclaim means to announce, so it's known as the Emancipation Proclamation. He is known for saving the Union, because remember, the Union, the, the states were being divided, and he did not want that to happen. He fought the war in order to save the United States and preserve the Union. He led the war during the Civil War. He led the, he led the United States during the Civil War. And here he is on the $5 bill and the penny. So you see him a lot around. Lincoln is one of those words you need to know how to spell. It has a funny little L here. Lincoln and Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president. And the Emancipation Proclamation, you do not know how, have to know how to spell, but it was the order issued by Abraham Lincoln to free slaves in those 11 southern states. And Abe has a beautiful memorial in Washington, D.C., you can see him inside here where he sits on a big chair and um, as a beautiful memorial. Now moving on into the Spanish-American War. It was not actually in Spain, but the Spanish-American War in 1898 was between the U.S. and Spain, but actually the U.S. wanted to help Cuba so here is Cuba down here. The U.S. wanted to help Cuba become independent from Spain because the U.S. had economic interests in Cuba. So the U.S. won the war and Cuba gained its independence. As well, US, the U.S. bought Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines from Spain for $20 million, and those areas became U.S. territories. And that's it. That's it for the civics lesson. So let's try some of those questions. See how well you are listening. So name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. 
We can have the War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War. So any one of these, whichever one is easiest for you to remember. What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Africans or people from Africa? Okay, you could say either answer. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. That is known as the Civil War or the war between the states. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. You can say slavery, economic reasons, states' rights. Okay. Remember we talked about slavery and we talked about states' rights where the southern states said they had the right to do what they wanted to do and they had the right to separate. Um, and economic reasons comes from the fact that the southern states said they needed the slaves in order to produce the crops that they needed in order to sell. Right? So those economic reasons are there as well. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? He freed the slaves or the Emancipation Proclamation. Notice how that's in parentheses. You do not have to say it and you do not have to spell it or write it or anything. You can simply say freed the slaves. You can also say saved the Union or preserved the Union. You can say he led the U.S. during the Civil War. He led the U.S. during the Civil War. So any of those answers? Now here, what did the Emancipation Proclamation do? So you don't have to say it, but your officer might say it. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? It freed the slaves freed the slaves in the Confederate states, in those 11 states. You do not have to say in the Confederate states. You can just say freed the slaves. Okay. All right, so make sure you're writing those on your, on your index cards to make your own flashcards, right? You should have a nice stack by now. We're almost done. Let's look at a couple reading and writing sentences. Try this one. And together, who was Abraham Lincoln? Who was Abraham Lincoln? And then you would write this sentence. Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Lincoln was president during the Civil War. So here I did tell you, you need to learn how to spell that word Lincoln. Okay, it has that tricky little L in there. Let's try this reading. What is the largest state? What is the largest state? And now try writing Alaska is the largest state. Alaska is the largest state. And here you go. Alaska is the largest state. And practice writing that sentence. All right. Keep studying. That's it for class number nine. Please join us for class number 10 to continue your lessons. We are almost to the end of our 12 sessions. If you click on that subscribe button above, you will get the next lesson delivered right to your inbox. It really helps us out. Every subscription helps us a lot. Um, so let us know if you have any questions. We'll try to get you those answers. And thanks again for watching. Keep studying. Stay well. Stay safe. Stay in. All that good stuff. Bye-bye.